Uh, music is a way Gospel jazz r and Touches you every day Talk about way it moves you It can be day to day It's the R&B Bistro Let music have its way Hello and welcome to the R&B Bistro Up Close and Personal. I'm your host Venus and I'm here to take you through this musical dance we call life. And to do that, I must talk to artists that can give us tips to help us make it through. Now that wonderful jazzy music you hear in the background is from our guest today who is who has been in the business for more than three decades. He is a wonderful Latin jazz percussionist and he's played with Beth Midler, uh, Spiro Gyro, Aretha Franklin, Luther Vandross, and many, many others, too much to mention. We'll get into that. So, help me welcome to the show, Mr. Stephen Kroon. Thank you so much for being here, Stephen. Thank you for asking me. How are you? I'm great. Wonderful. Rod wasn't too bad to get here, right? No, it was a beautiful day. The yeah. sun's still shining. It's nice yeah. and, you know, the weather's still good. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so honored, and I just want to get up close and personal with you right away. Uh -oh. So tell me, talk about your musical background. Wow. Um, well, everything, as a child, mm -hmm. um, the one who really started me on my journey, my parents was very, uh, they always like played a lot of music in the house. So right? they played, they weren't musical. They weren't musical, but they played. My mother sang, and mm -hmm. I didn't find that out until later on. Uh -huh. And that's why I noticed, we, when, you know, she always liked um, Ella and yes. Sarah, you know, yeah. That jazz, All real that jazz. jazz. Yeah, yeah, she yes. liked that. And my father was more into, um, well, my mother was too. Um, uh, Tito Puente and mm -hmm. you know uh, Machito and, yes. and uh, he, he was listening he had all a you know, great collection of, of, of all that stuff mm -hmm. and um, my brother I have uh, three brothers but my brother Bobby um, he was the first one that really kind of uh, started off with the musical journey mm -hmm. We had a singing group back in the day. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I didn't see I, that I, in my research. Well, no, I, I usually don't talk about when I was a kid. I, I, I wanted to be Frankie Diamond. Uh, really? And I had the high, <laughs> I had the high voice and everything. I sang Did all you? his tunes. And we had a singing group. We were uh -huh. killing. And I was only about 11 years old. And uh, then the voice changed. Mm -hmm. And wow. So, and so you didn't get the deep, good voice too, like Luther? You know what? What happened is when the voice changed, I was so uh, over, scared, of, scared uh -huh. of the whole thing because I was singing in front of a crowd and trying to reach the notes and it wouldn't come <laughs> out. And I said, I'll never do this again. Oh. And then my brother, you know, because I, I loved him. So he, he passed away, but oh, okay. uh, I loved him so much. He was uh, such a great cat. He was like my mentor. Mm -hmm. And he went to the percussion right away before, right after that, too. Right, you know, right, he, right. we started playing timbales and, and yes. congas and mangos. And uh, I'd do anything just to hang out with my older brother, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I started playing it, too, and I fell in love with this stuff. Wow. And my brother's the one that would always tell me, hey, man, this is you. This is he you. He saw it. He, he said, saw man, it first. You know, in the neighborhood, he was like everybody, uh, he, everyone always looked at him for everything. Mm -hmm. He was the life of the party, mm -hmm. most talented and everything. Mm -hmm. But he you says, mean that wasn't you with all the jokes no, that you no, told since we no, met? No, I was wasn't very you? quiet and shy. Stop. And he said, Steve, I'm telling you something, man. This is you. Uh -huh. He said, I'm telling you, I'm not going to do what you think I'm going to do. You're going to do it. Wow. And um, that's what kind of started my journey. Now let's talk about percussion because there's so mm -hmm. many instruments in that family, right? Let's give there me is. Some. And the whole idea and the concept of, of well, maybe really fall in love with too, mm -hmm. is that Besides just um, um, congas and bongos and, you know, all the mm -hmm. basic stuff and all, mm -hmm. I fell in love with sound. You know, who made this sound? Who made these uh, uh, sounds like of the forest? And, you know, you hear in the background, you hear all these things. Yeah. And through doing that is when I really got into, like, African and Brazilian music. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're very heavy in, in percussive sound instruments. Yes, yes, yes. And they, a lot of their stuff comes from emulating the rainforest mm -hmm. and the stuff like that in the natural way yeah, of like life. Yeah, like that wood thing. Absolutely. That does Rain, like this, the wind, yes. the, you know. And that came through that. And I was fortunate enough to, to study with a Brazilian guy by the name of Don Juan Romao, mm -hmm. who came here with Sergio Mendes. Okay. And uh, he explained a lot of that stuff to me too. When you adapt to use this, when you use wind sounds, when you use shaking sounds, when you use different bells or colors, mm -hmm. you know, and how to make it go along and coincide in music. 
a good percussionist should use, should know all the different uh, elements and, and styles of music, mm -hmm. like uh, Latin jazz, Brazilian, African, right. and use it as a spice. So when you're playing with someone, you may hear a certain kind of a groove and say, ah, this needs this. Yes. This needs that. Yes. This needs this color. This needs that. So you like, you're like painting mm -hmm. and adding flavor and spices to the yes. music, and that's what your job is. Yes. I you love know? it. So it sounds like music is, is just everything to you. Oh, it's my life. Yes. And then mm -hmm. it also sounds like you feel that music does something for the world. Oh, Or wow. for the audience. Let's talk about well, that. You know, this is the blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, in working with, I was with Luther 20 years. And wow. I played with Ron Carter for 20 years. So when I was watching Luther, I was seeing you and didn't know it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. good. So um, the thing that amazed me, mm -hmm. especially with, um, when you work on, with, with an artist, that, you know, you're so visible and you're doing these big arenas. and mm -hmm, all. Mm -hmm. After the shows and you're walking out there, I, you know, you see the people and you meet people mm -hmm. and they'll come to you and crying. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, what, what's the matter? They said, oh, man, Luther. What he said, he was like talking to me. He touched me. Mm -hmm. So now you find out that when you're performing and you're playing, the person who came out to see you could have been depressed That's or right. sad That's or right. lonely That's or, right. you know. That's right. And you're giving a service, man. Yes. It's partly of, of a healing. Yes, you're right. And you have to look at it in a way of... Um, not just being powerful, but being understanding. Mm -hmm. man. You know, that's a, a very beautiful place to be, and to knowing, help somebody. And knowing that you're that touching you somebody. somebody. Yes. You know, and you don't know how you're touching it. A long, a long story short, this, this, this uh, kid, he was autistic. Mm -hmm. He uh, Facebooked me, because parents did it all, because he fell in love with my sounds. Yes. And he mentioned all my, what's that sound that you do with this? And I had to explain it to him. I didn't know he was autistic. He came to one of my shows with his parents. Wow. And when he came up to me and started talking, that's when I realized he was. And to realize that I touched, I helped him and touched yes, him. Yes. Connect. Yes. That's, awesome, that's an awesome feeling. Gift from God. That's an awesome feeling. So if there's any way that, you know, mm -hmm. I could have helped him or made him feel a little better or mm -hmm. maybe even, maybe he'll be a percussionist. Right. So you play a lot in the percussion family. So is your Absolutely. favorite the kungas? Did I say that right? Yeah, kungas. you said that right. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, yes, one of my favorites. Okay. So now I'm watching <clears throat> you because I, I watched a couple of your videos and I'm going, and anytime I see anybody playing the kungas or anything that's not with sticks, don't your hands hurt? <laughs> I, I got to ask somebody, does your hands hurt? <laughs> well, you, you know, it, it does, but you develop just like anything else. You mm -hmm. do develop the techniques and you learn the, the proper way to yeah. play. Yes. And any instrument is very physical, mm -hmm. whether you're breathing, mm -hmm. hitting, banging, right. whatever you're doing right. is physical. Mm -hmm. But if you learn the proper technique and you learn the proper way to play, the, 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 the motion there's and the way, way you hit, hit it, it. Yeah. there's a way. And your hands, man, mm -hmm. you know, uh, God gave us this amazing body that, mm -hmm. you know, any, anything that you do, it has a way of uh, adapting. Right. Like you've seen my hands, you see the calluses in the yeah, same spots. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Do you do anything to and keep them in shape? Just keep playing. Wow. <laughs> just keep playing. Wow. But uh, it's, you know, when you love something, you do something, you create a way to deal mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And, um, no, you know, sometimes if you're working a lot, a lot of days in a row, you can, you know, you can mm -hmm. get a little pain and this and that, but life has pain mm -hmm. and it has yeah, joy, right. pain, right. <laughs> sunshine, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so What a I beautiful want, song, huh? Please, don't get me started because we will go all oh, day. We yeah, will yeah, two yeah. hours yeah, more Yeah, just to deal with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. music, I was jazzing up the ABCs at two. So I've been wanting to do... This, my entire life, never wanted to do anything else and deviated to get a kid and all that stuff, but we won't go there. But anyway, so now I watched a video where you were uh, playing, what's it, the Shake Array? Right. Okay. And you were teaching. Mm -hmm. So now I, I'm like, how do I do this? I wish I could do these different kind of things or whatever. I can't even play a tambourine. Sing, yes, tambourine, no. You know, any of those things. So do you teach anywhere else or do you just teach on videos? Um, well, the videos, and sometimes if people come to me and ask me and all, I'll, I'll you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I tell them I share whatever I have, man. Right. That's what life is about, sharing. Exactly. But I tell a lot of people, 
And I tell uh, a, a lot of, uh, especially young people that come to me and ask me questions, because we used to, I used to, I played with quite a few groups mm -hmm. that went around the school system. Really? Yeah, and we would talk about this. Mm -hmm. You know, the, they'd ask you the questions. So and, you would play first and right, then you'd have and a then question they'd ask the question, right. Awesome. So I would always tell them that um, uh, uh, when, any instrument, the first thing you got to find out about it is, 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 is how it feels. Mm -hmm. Be comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Find a balance. Right. You know, you got to be comfortable with it to then play it. Mm -hmm. So y you have to take the time out. Everything is about time. You got to do everything when you practice. You got to do it slow. You got to really put your mind and your concentration into it mm -hmm. so that you could find the, the prop. The, you have to understand and know the instrument, and the instrument has to learn and know you. you. Yes. You know? I know that sounds so odd to, it sounds to the odd, world, but, but it's, it's true. It's really true. Yeah. And you got to become comfortable. Come you're you're a vocalist. It. Yes. You got to become yeah. comfortable with that mic. That's right. That's right. That mic, because that's your whole projection. Yeah. And I not only have to be comfortable with the mic, I have to be comfortable with the song. Oh. Because there's certain things that I, I just cannot absolutely. sing. Absolutely. I went on an audition. The lyrics. Once. Yes, that too. I went on an audition once for an R&B, you know, and I had my manager, she took me and she's like, I said, yeah, I don't sing R&B. She says, I want you to do this. I'm like, okay. I go there and I said to the guy, can we just do a jazz song? He says, you jazz people are lazy. I'm like, whatever. But anyway, so he wanted me to do, I think it was um, a Mary J song. I just, I couldn't do it. Got in a car, went back home, and I started singing, and she was so mad. She said, just shut up. Just shut up. You couldn't do it back there. Don't do it here. But I wasn't feeling it either, and I wanted to do jazz. I didn't want to do that particular song. And it was a, I know she dabbles in jazz a little bit, but it was, it was not a jazz song. And I, just, I can't even remember what the song was now, but I just could not do it. But once I got in the car, maybe I was a little nervous, you know. But once I got in the car, I just started singing it, and I did it in a jazzy way. So it felt a little better to me. You so you, you got to connect. You use your own thing to yeah, deal with it. Yeah. I, I was, I've been very fortunate that throughout my career, because I started off with the singing and the R&B thing, because when mm. I was really a kid, I was into the, the yeah. you know, uh, like everybody. All that Delphonic stuff. Well, Frankie no, Lyman. No, Frankie Lyman. Yeah. Frankie Lyman was a monster. Mm. The thing about Frankie Lyman is that you got to realize he was, when he was 14, 15 years old, a teenager. Mm -hmm. He was singing and phrasing like like uh, Dinah Washington, man. Yeah. I mean, he was singing like a like a, awesome. like a jazz singer. He yeah. was his ballads, Paper Castle. I mean, those, I mean, listen to his mm -hmm. songs, mm -hmm. man. He was a monster, monster. at that age. Yeah. Jackie Wilson, on you know. <gasps> so I got to really get into um, that uh, uh, R and B or, or what they call it, rock and roll, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. way back then, and mm -hmm. all the doo wop groups, the Drifters and Flamingos, right. and, you know. And then I, and the Latin, you know, just from my, my family, my home, mm -hmm. you know, my parents are, are from Puerto Rico. Right. So I got into all the, that stuff at a very young age. And then I got into the jazz as well at the same time. Mm -hmm. So being very well versed and liking all the music made me adapt. You got to be open minded. Yes. Some people only look in one yeah, direction. Tunnel vision. They tunnel got vision. tunnel vision. Yeah. So they can't figure out what the other person is mm -hmm. doing. You got, if you respect everything, you could play everything. I hear that. I hear you that. know what I mean? Now, you, we mentioned Tunnel Vision, so I want to go mm -hmm. to your LPs, but I want to stop for a minute at your latest one, which you call it's On The One, right? Mm -hmm. On The One. Now, you said that when, and I want to quote you what you said. You said, I always felt that there was a magic to the number five, and I know that we have captured the, the magic in this recording. On The One has been a signature phrase for whenever I sign off, it means to me being right on point and focused. So you said tunnel vision. So the only time I have tunnel vision is if I'm focused. And I want to stop for a minute before we go deeply into these, these CDs about the number five. Number five is one of my favorite numbers. Uh, numerology, number is it, five is, yeah. I'm trying to it's, figure it's, out it's, how do we have that in common? We didn't even know each other. Well, that's the spirit, that's spirit, that's the spirit thing. Awesome. You so know? this is your fifth CD? That's my fifth one. See, uh, what, what, what every CD mm -hmm. to me has super meaning. Mm -hmm. I mean, just thinking of doing my own CDs and all, mm -hmm. I put it into each one. If you look at my titles, it's, there's, there's, a, there's a story there. There's a meaning to it. Yeah. The first one, this one here, In My Path. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That already speaks for itself. My journey, my first journey. Right. You know, and then I did the the, uh, the second one was Senor Croon, mm -hmm. which is really dedicated to my dad. Nice. You know, uh, 
that was just uh, admiration for him. Mm -hmm. This one also, mm -hmm. El Masaya. And what does that mean? El Masaya mm -hmm. is, in Spanish, when you say, uh, when someone passes or makes the, the transition, they say, where did they go? And they say, they went, they went to the Masaya, which is nice. the I other like side. Nice, I like that. I'm going to use that. And that means beyond. Yes. It's actually beyond, which mm -hmm. is the double meaning for it. Mm -hmm. So when I was making this record, I asked my father about that because I was going to name the CD Beyond. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, Bob, what's Beyond yeah, me? Nice and he gave me a Masaya. Yes. He passed away during that time. So it was a way of me dealing with it and dedicating yeah. for him. And if you notice, this, this was taken in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And this some water right here in San Juan. Uh, my father was a merchant marine. Okay. He was a seaman and all. Mm -hmm. So this was my way of kind of like... Releasing him, him, releasing yeah, him, yeah. yeah, awesome. So now you self-produce and self-publish? Yes. Talk about that, why? <sighs> okay. Well, you know, with today's market and the way the music industry mm -hmm. went and, and everything is kind of scattered, they don't yeah. have really um, the music deals that they had before and mm -hmm. the stuff like that. You can't really uh, wait around for someone to just produce you. Know? Exactly. And another thing, too, is... If people produce you, then they also have the uh, the choices control of who to control so. to say mm -hmm. who they want you to be and how they, right, you know. Right, right, right. Um, with my stuff, um, I pick everything. I do everything, mm -hmm. you know. I don't write it. I, I, I uh, collaborate with people. There's a lot of my friends that I've known throughout the years mm -hmm. who are great writers. Mm -hmm. And I give them opportunity. I tell them, hey, man, write me a tune for my CD. Right. You know, I tell them what I want and then I get it. Awesome. You know, so it opens up a lot for the, just the whole universe of, yeah. of the artist. So when you do that, do you change things around when they bring it to you and say, well, I'd rather this or I'd rather that? Um, usually I tell them in advance what I want mm -hmm. or I trust them enough that I know they're going to give me something with, it's within that, that, that realm box. of mm -hmm. what I want. I tell them, this is, this is what you're hearing. This is what my group is. Mm -hmm. And the instrumentation usually never really changes. Right. So, um, if you listen to my CDs, we, we've created and developed a sound. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had the same guys playing with me for anywhere from five to ten years. Okay. Which is the same thing that Luther did mm -hmm. and Ron Carter. So, do you prefer playing with someone else's group or your own group? Oh, now it's me. Mm -hmm. And they're called the Sextet, right? Right. Okay. See, one thing that I really like, um, I had the good fortune of, of uh, playing like with Ron and Luther and recording with a lot of people mm -hmm. during my earlier journeys uh, uh, of my music uh, industry, which allowed me to become a musician. Right. See, if, if I didn't have that success and all, mm -hmm, that I would have to have, yeah, I would have to have another job or something. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm no serious. Yeah, yeah. You know, but since I had that, that was the, the blessing within itself yeah. to make me, you know. So become, you're always working. Right. And become a musician yes. that I could say, I've done this all my life. Yes. At this stage of my life now that I've done that, you know, which I'm very proud and happy of, mm -hmm. and uh, um, my age also in life, mm -hmm. I want to do my own thing because there's something in me that you have that to I get out. Give. You don't want to. You don't want to you know go I mean? beyond without right. letting that out. Yeah. Yes. Whether it's yes. whether it's. Um, it, it doesn't have to be to become famous or superstar, mm -hmm. whatever. It's, it's my give back to yeah. what I've received. And God gives us talent so that we can take care of ourselves, and we're supposed right. to use those talents right. to just do just that. Right. Yeah. So now the, the, the titles, do the people that you collaborate with, do they give you the titles or I do you, do all the you titles. title everything? I love it. So I now I fell in love with three of the songs. Um, I played Monterey at, at the beginning because that just made me just feel like yeah. dancing, mm -hmm. you know. But when I was listening to this one, and this is a cover, right, as time goes by, but just the way it started, I just, you know, music brings out different emotions in you. Absolutely. And when I heard that, I almost, you know, I'm like, I'm talking about it now and I'm feeling like I'm tearing up. That's what happened when I heard this song. Well, you know, it's a, when I, you know, um, I, I walk a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm a walker. And so you listen to, who no. you listen to when you're walking? No, God. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you why. When you walk, you walk with God. Yes. I don't put headphones on. I don't put anything. Mm -hmm. Because it's a natural sound of life. Yes. 
I mean, you're walking. That's why I say this is a music bird dance. fly. It also is percussive for me. Yeah, a yeah. bird will and fly you a, by. Right. And then, a, you know, if I'm in the park, it's, a squirrel scatter. walks yes. by. And I hear the little leaf things. Oh, my God. The ducks in the water. I mean, ser I'm serious. Yeah, I, I, I know you are, and, and I'm with you. And, and uh, you just walk in, and you walk in, you, uh, everything has a Everything motion. has a sound. And everything. if you take these things off, you hear a whole other thing. You are so awesome. And then, you not only so that, awesome. when you walk, your mind opens up. Yeah. Everything is bothering you. Yeah. Either comes to light or goes away for yeah, a moment. You're right. Walking is and I always tell people, I can be in my house. No music, no TV, no, no, just me and my thoughts. And they're like, how do you do that? I'm like, why? I mean, first of all, you need to be comfortable with yourself. And then I'm always thinking. I'm thinking when I'm sleeping. Sometimes I have to say, God, can you please turn my mind off so I can get some sleep? Because it's constantly moving and creating. And I know that has to be the same with you, especially with your hearing different things. You, do you hear things in as you're trying to go to sleep and wake up and there's a sound in your right? Let me tell you something. Well, let me just finish the thought about what you asked me about time that goes by. Yeah. That, I was walking. And because I have so much songs and music in my head, mm -hmm. because, you know, I just listen to the radio. I, I love music. Right. And that came to me like that. Boom, do, dee, do, 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 that melody. I went, oh, yeah. And I like to do things that I know people are already, they, it's in their heart, it's in their soul. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Casablanca. Get them there first and then give them the new stuff. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yes. So when I, it was a no brainer. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, you asked me about, what was this, just the last question we were talking about? You said, I don't know. We're talking about so much. Yeah. So let's go on to another okay. one. Let's go on to another one. So, uh, you've been in the business for, let's say, I said over over three decades. So you wouldn't do anything else, right? If you weren't doing music, what would you do? I, I, nothing. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing else for nothing. me to do. Nothing. You know what I mean? Nothing. I have nothing else to do. All right. So tell me what you would tell, or let's tell our audience, what would you tell the people that are aspiring to be a musician, to be a percussionist, to be whatever? What are three tips that you would give them to succeed? Okay, um, the first thing you, you have to do whenever you want to do something mm -hmm. is if you got to really be ready to commit. Mm -hmm. So you, you must know, be committed. That, the commit, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, you got to really be, really be willing to really practice. Mm -hmm. Practice is everything. Yeah. I you know, a lot skills. of people say that, <laughs> and they, you know, they, but they, they're distracted. Yeah. Your focus has to be in the practice, the, the knowledge of knowing what you want to learn. You got to okay. learn it from all aspects. Okay. You got to, you know, if, if uh, uh, you got to study it, mm -hmm. you, you got to get, you know, find teachers, find people that, you know, that you enjoy uh, the way they play. So are we making these two focus and then study, or that's it's, that's all one? That's all one. Okay, I need, that's I just need one two. right in there. All right, I need okay, two. Okay, after that, you know, you got to find a, uh, a way to make it. To make it happen. Make it to happen. Make it I happen. love that. Right. Love so, that. You, you know, you got to become um, a, a, a communicator. You got to go out and hang out. You got to go on the scene. You got to find you gotta out. You got to network. You got to network. Yes. You got to yes. find out where the musicians are playing at. Mm -hmm. You got to this and that. You got to listen. Sit in. You got to sit in. Yes. You got to talk to people. Yes. You know, and if you do sit in, especially like back in the days. You got to be able to do something. Right? Yeah, because if you didn't do anything, <laughs> See, like, they'll tell the you. See, end of you. If they look at you, here. get up and get out. <laughs> but you know what? That means you go home. And you practice. And you practice and you come back and you sit down. I, I'll give you a, a real quick, nice story. Mm -hmm. Um Gordon Edwards, bass player from mm -hmm. Stuff. I mm -hmm. mean, he was the, he's the cat back okay, in the day. Okay. So we would, they would, the bar scene in Brooklyn was huge. And before Stuff became Stuff, they were called the Encyclopedia of Soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody came through that group. Cornell and, you know, Dupree and all these guys. Purdy, wow. yes, they, yes, they all yeah. played with Stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Stuff was, 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 was right. the group. Okay. So they were playing the bar around my, the corner from me. And I seen going up there, and they were grooving, man. And I walked up to him during the break and said, you mind if I come with my drum and sit in? He said, yeah, but if I look at you, get, get up, up and, and, get up. and get out. <laughs> Just like that. And I said, no problem. And you weren't even intimidated, right? I sat down, and I played, and I played the whole set. And he said, hey, man, Booby, anytime you want to sit in, come on in. you come on in. All right. Give me number three. You know? Tip um, number three. You got to find out also how to present yourself. Yes. Okay. You know, I tell this to a lot of young guys because they don't realize it. Right. 
the way you look, your appearances, the so way important. you the way you talk, the way you act. Yes, and respect. The way you respect. Yes. You know what I mean? You know. So important. So important and uh, your entrance. Mhm. Mm you know what I mean? Right. You know you 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 have to become somebody before you just come in there and just think you are somebody. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Okay. Can't be offensive, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. And if you come in there acting like that, you better be able to you back it be up. You better be really, yeah. Back it up. Back it up. Right. So, that, I mean, I think that has, I tell a lot of guys, you got to know who you're playing for, how do you dress for it, how do you act for it. You know, everything has a different, you don't, everything is one mix. Right. You don't walk into a, a, a real classy gig and you're coming in with, with dungarees right away and think, yes. you got to. And hang it down at that. Right. You know? And okay. One thing Ron Carter told me all the time, too, man. You gotta look better than the audience. I hear that. They're yes. paying their money to see you. Yes, yes. You, know you don't want to look like who did it and why. No, you, you, you should be presentable. So where are you gonna be next? You were in New Brunswick about three weeks ago. Where are you gonna be yeah, next? Yeah, and we, man, that was fun. Mm -hmm. We did very well there. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, next, I'm playing the um, the 21st at BAM Cafe, mm -hmm. which that? is the Brooklyn Academy of Music in okay. downtown Brooklyn. Okay. Uh, check it out, um, bamcafe.org. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. It's a beautiful venue. It's, a, it's the Brooklyn County Music. Okay. And we're there, and uh, uh, they usually have a, a nice crowd. It's a free, uh, free concert. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we're going to be there tearing it up. All right. On a Friday How night. can they get your CDs? Um, CD Baby. Okay. Uh, dot com. Um, they could also get it at Discalga dot com. Mm -hmm. um, if you live in, in the city, in Harlem, you can get at Casa Latina. Mm -hmm. And the latest one is On The One? On The One. Or just come to my shows, because I sell them sell there. Sell them there. Mm -hmm. I hear that. So now, how can they find you? Are you on Facebook, Twitter, or any of that? I'm on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, you can friend me, Steve Crow. Mm -hmm. And um, also, my website uh, is uh, Croonatune, which is K-R-O-O-N-A-T-U-N-E. Mm -hmm. Uh, at AOL.com. Okay. And you can send me your stuff and I put you on my, my list. Mailing list? Yeah. Awesome. Because awesome. I have constant contact. Okay, great. And also my website. Uh -huh. uh, my website is www.stevecroon.com, mm -hmm. which is S T V E K R O O N, no N. Okay. Dot com. You know, I was going back and forth. I had an E on one and an E N on the other. I'm a mess. It's been wonderful chatting with you. Thank you That's so much it? for coming by. Yes, we'll have to. You have to come back and talk to That's me. That's it. Will you do that? Will you come back and talk to me? Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Venus. You can find me on Venus987 uh, on. That's on Twitter, Venus987 underscore on Instagram, Venus Crute on Facebook. And remember, come on back to the Bistro next time because you never know what kind of information we're going to have for you. It's never too late to live your dreams. And when you do, I'll be there encouraging you. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time right here on the R&B Bistro, up close and personal. Mm -hmm.